The history, top of the second, Bonds, just a tap right in front of the plate. Rod Barajas will take care of business and throw out Bonds easily. Still top of the second, watch Schill taking signs. He says fastball and just like that, strikes out Jose Cruz Jr. 10 Ks, five hits, he walked on an eight. Let's flash back to that. July 12th, Bonds off a of Schilling. Goodbye. Later in that same game, Schilling hit Bonds with a pitch. Like I said, those two had a history. Back to Monday, Bonds against Schill, grounds out again. And check this out, as Schilling left the field, he gives his condolences to Barry for his dad's death, and Barry appears to appreciate that. Meanwhile, Sidney Ponson cruising for the Giants. What a pickup for San Fran, huh? Striking out Luis Gonzalez. Top of the seventh, Bonds again against Schilling. No, 0 for 3 against Schill. Schilling with his 86 double-digit strikeout performance. Ponson getting Raul Mondesi in the eighth with two on, two out. Ponson, eight innings, no earned runs, three strikeouts. Simple as that for him. Top nine, Marquise Grissom. Oscar Villarreal can't handle it. Everybody's safe. Bases loaded for Barry. Nobody out. Mike Myers on the mound against Barry Bonds. And Mike Myers simply did not have his mojo. Usually doesn't. Bonds is a 320 career hitter against Myers. Two runs single, 82 RBIs on the year for Barry. The Giants win 2-0. Bonds would say later he doesn't like much work in overtime. Much more on the return of Barry Bonds coming up later in Sports Center. Bonds does not hide his emotions with our Pedro Gomez. Barry also got a hug from someone that might surprise you. So we were done with interleague play wrong. Red Sox and Phils in a makeup game of the vet. Still no Manny Ramirez. For the Red Sox, as for the Phils, day 14 of their 27 games in 27 days. Pick it up, bottom seven. Phils in a 6-5 lead. Bases loaded, nobody out. Mike Timlin gets Pat Burl check swing. Next batter, Chase Utley, grounds the first. David Ortiz going home. Two outs, Larry Boa, not happy. Next batter, Tomas Perez, grounds the first. Ortiz takes it himself. Phils had bases loaded, nobody out. Can't score, Larry Boa, not happy. Happy. Top of the eighth. Two on for Boston now. Real Cormier in. David Ortiz hits it deep to center. Bangs right over the 408 mark. Damian Jackson and Nomar would come around to score. Ortiz to third. Sox a 7 6 lead. As for Larry Boa, the Philly skipper. Is he happy? Not happy. Two batters later. Here's Trot Nixon. Nixon not happy. Hit on the wrist. He would stay in the game. Bottom eight still 7-6. The pinch hitter's Ricky Lede. Off of Mike Timlin. Get out of town. Lede is 13th. A pinch hit home run. Still bottom eight. Base is loaded for Jim Tomey. Always dangerous. Base hit to center. Marlon Byrd and Bobby Abreu come around. And the Phils take a 9-7 lead. And with that, we go to the night. Phils with a two-run lead. Jose Mesa in to protect it. Or not. Doug Mirabelli walks to start the inning. Larry Boa, guess what? Not happy. One out of the inning. Damian Jackson. Base hit to right. Two on. One down. Let's check on Larry Boa. Exactly. Joe Kerrigan, the pitching coach, had to try to calm down Mesa. Had it work? Not well. Wild pitch. Runners advance. Haven't seen Larry Boa in a while. Mesa now intentionally walks no more. What's Bo up to? Lou Merloni up with the bases loaded. Merloni, dribbler, looks like a line drive in the box score. Infield single scores a run. It's a 9 8 game. Boa has seen enough, pulls Mesa. Turk Wendell enters the game. Kevin Millar for Boston. Wendell walks Millar, tying run scores. When was the last time Bo was happy? We're tied at nine, bases loaded, trots back at the plate. Way back, right field, it is curving. Goodbye, home run, a grand salami. I was just sitting on all speed stuff, looking for a slider, and he, he just made a mistake right there, and I was fortunate. Uh, when, when a pitcher makes a mistake, you also got to swing that bat, and I was fortunate to uh, put the bat on the ball and get up in the air. Evidently, the wrist is fine, and so too, at least for one day, are the Boston Red Sox. As for Turk Wendell, he's giving up chewing gum. As for Larry Boa, remains unhappy.
Hey, get this. The last time the Red Sox scored at least six in the ninth to come back and win a game, the 98 home opener when Boston scored seven. Conine arriving Monday after the Marlins acquired him from the Orioles. The fans thrilled to have him back. Remember, Jeff Conine was an original Florida Marlin. Take a look. This is the starting lineup on April 5th, 1993, the first game in franchise history. Only Benito Santiago and Conine are still active Major League Baseball players. Uh, Conine went 4 for 4 in that game, by the way. In this game on Monday, off of Toma Oka, it's shallow. And Henry Mateo makes the catch. Juan Pierre with tags from third. Conine went 1 for 3 on Monday. 1 0 Marlins as Conine got the sack fly. Bottom 8 3 2 Florida. Rocky Biddle against your pinch hitter Lenny Harris who still can swing the magic stick. Vlad Guerrero the gun. Derek Lee rounding third. He slides in safely. Take another look. That's not Buddy Lee. That's Derek Lee and he is pumped up and Vlad can't believe it. Marlins go on to win their first four game sweep since 96 and they jump ahead of the Phillies in the wild card hunt. Paul LaDuca and the Dodgers have won four straight after losing four in a row. Open up a three-game series with the Astros. Been a tough couple of days for LaDuca. Flashback to Saturday. At the top of the third, takes a foul ball on the mask. In the top of the ninth, he banged up two. Gonna take a foul off the top of his knee. LaDuca would be okay. It's a tough position. Monday, top of the third, Ademo Onomo is pitching to Jeff Kent. Kent fouls it back into LaDuca. Obviously in pain. The trainers come out to take a look, making sure he's okay. You got a good look. The ball deflects and knocks his mask off. The Duca would leave with a sprained jaw, taken to the hospital. X rays were negative. Dave Roberts strikes out looking, gets Wade Miller. Didn't like the call. Miller, six and two thirds, allowed just one earned run. Top of the ninth, bases loaded. Astros already a 6 1 lead. They're going double digits. Jeff Kent gets out of town, a grand slam. The fourth for Houston this season. So here's your wild card race up to the second. The Marlins clinging to a one game advantage over the Phillies. There are still five teams within two and a half games of the lead. The Cubs, Diamondbacks, and Expos still in the mix as well with roughly one month of baseball. Beat Minnesota in game four of the ALCS. Got the start. Here in the bottom of the second. Strikes out Torrey Hunter looking. And Hunter still looking. Gets into it with Phil Cuzzy, the home plate umpire. And Cuzzy doesn't appreciate Hunter's attitude by trying to show him up and ejects him. Now, Hunter, the charge has to be restrained. All right, let's take a look at the replay and see what all the fuss is about. Looks to be a pretty close call. Tough to let that one go. Top of the third, still one nothing. Angels. Two outs, bases loaded. Scott Spezio hit 353 against the Twins of the ALCS. In this game on Monday, he had a grand slam. 5 nothing Angels. They go on to win by a score of 10-2. Royals Rangers Daryl May shut out the Rangers a week ago on the hill for the Royals bottom two against Mark Teixeira. Number 21 for Teixeira makes it one nothing Texas. Two nothing Teixeira up again. He's built for this. Another home run. Rangers up three nothing. Bottom six. Three two now. Two on for Teixeira. I'll tell you his swing is like whoa. This one is deep. Is it number three? the top of the wall. A-Rod would score. Rafael Palmero will try to score, but Palmero, well, listen, he hits a hot, lot of home runs, but he's no youngster. He's out. Third hit for Teixeira, though. Rangers up 4-2. Raul Abana is up the smash. Michael Young, tremendous play. Rangers escape. Bottom seven. Teixeira with another chance for a hat trick of home runs facing Nate Field. Get some swing. Not this time. Three RBIs, three for four was Teixeira, and the Rangers beat the Royals for the first time in seven meetings. Minnesota and Kansas City both lost on Monday, while the White Sox had the day off, so Chicago holds a two-game edge over... A rainy one at Wrigley for the first of a five-game series between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Let's flash back. This past May 11th, the Cards visited Wrigley. It was rainy back then and windy, too. Eli Marrero would slip and injure his right ankle. He missed 101 games. He'd be activated on Monday.
And on Monday, they had a four-hour, 17-minute rain delay. Waited it out. We would get underway. Third inning, Mark Pryor against Albert Pujols. A classic National League matchup. Pryor gets it this time. And it wouldn't be his last striker. Now in the fifth against Fernando Vina. Vina sends a shot at the middle. Ramon Martinez, the great play and the throw to get Vina at first, keeping it scoreless. Bottom of the fifth, Sammy's on first. Woody Williams to Moise Salou. Lops won the right center. Jim Edmonds going to play it on a bounce. Maybe some hesitation because Sammy is able to go to third. And the aggressive base running Cubs would take advantage. Very next batter is Eric Karros. Caros shoots one past Vina, who was playing at halfway. Cubs at a one nothing lead. Later in the fifth, three nothing. Pryor, the pitcher, gonna come up with the base hit first. The two hits on the night. That's an RBI hit. Four nothing Cubs in the eighth inning. Pryor another strikeout. We turn to Harold Reynolds for more on Pryor and not about his off-speed pitch. Clark in the box, the chopper over Chris Rietzma. Look who's charging, D'Angelo Jimenez. Throws it away. Those two runs, score. Brewers within one, 5-4. That brings Richie Sexton to the play. What's he going to do? Brevin, right field. Warning track wall, that ball is caught. Oh, boy. Just short, so since he hangs on to win, Rietzma with his six saves. Jeremy Griffiths against someone named Greg Maddox. Maddox, 31 and 16 lifetime against the Amazons. Lots of rain and a scary moment for Atlanta. Gary Sheffield trying to make a sliding catch. Right knee catches on the wet grass. He would walk it off and then jog it off. He stayed in the game. Top of the fifth, score tied at two. Base is loaded for Chipper. And he grounds into the 3 6 1 double play. Bases loaded for the Braves. They come up empty. That was one of the stories of this game. Top of the 6 2 2. Robert Pick rounds to Joe McEwing. Terrific play and the throw. McEwing replacing the injured Jose Reyes at shortstop. Top of the eighth. Bases loaded. Johnny Estrada. 1 2 3 double play. Braves go 0 for 4 with the bases loaded. One of the big reasons they fall to the Mets. 3 to 2. In other Braves related news, John Smoltz says he could be out another two weeks. The super closer went on the DL last Wednesday with tendonitis in his right elbow. He's scheduled to throw on Wednesday, adding he's gearing up for the postseason. That's when fellow reliever Kevin Grabowski hopes to return by a partial tear in his pitching shoulder, a fairly common injury among pitchers that usually, usually doesn't require surgery unless it's severe. Thanks in Toronto. David Wells winless in his past six starts, stretching out his back. Derek Jeter, there he is, resting. Bottom four tied to one, Wells. Against Josh Phelps, Vernon Wells would score on that. 2-1 Blue Jays, bottom five. Wells now facing Reed Johnson. Connecting, down the line that goes. Eric Hinsky would score. Wells, seven innings, nine hits, five runs, 4-1 Toronto. Roy Halladay trying to tie Esteban Loiza for the AL lead and wins with 18. Still 4-1, Halladay facing Alfonso Soriano, no contest. Top of the seventh, this time against Hideki Matsui. Halladay all over that. Ten gays for him. Next batter, Aaron Boone. Halliday strikes him out. And then still another challenge, or is it not? John Flaherty. What about it, Roy? Great performance. What'd you think? I just worry about locating on both sides of the plate and, uh, and getting my curveball over for strikes, and it makes things a lot easier for me. If I can uh, throw strikes on both sides and, and get that uh, off speed over in any count, uh, then I'm able to pitch uh, the way I like to pitch. The complete game four hitter, his 18th win, an ERA of 3.58 for the year. 8-1 the final. 15 of 18. Bottom of the first two down. Craig Monroe going to give it a ride. Will the park hold it? Did he get all of it? No. Jody Garrett is there. He's got warning track power. Watch this. After making the catch, Garrett flips the ball into the stands. What the who? Oh, no. And check out the fan head first over the railing, but he's okay. How often you see a guy flip the ball into the crowd and the guy falls over the railing? And the next time up, he doubles to left center. Tigers clinch last in the AL Central. That's what they clinched. So, through 136 games, the Tigers have the exact same record as the 1962 expansion Mets, who set the Major League record for most losses in a 